the reason your MS and PhD applications keep getting rejected is not the lack of publications. You can get scholarships with zero publications. You just need the right CV. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to highlight your research potential in your CV without any publications. What's up everybody, Sadia Khaf here. I'm an electrical engineer doing PhD in machine learning. And on this channel, we usually talk about engineering, machine learning, and graduate scholarships how to get in and how to get through graduate schools so since i'm here i obviously got accepted for both ms and phd the question is how many research papers do you think i had in my undergrad and my masters i can tell you i had zero publications in my undergrad when i got my scholarship for my ms but just take a guess off the top of your head because in ms you are expected to publish some papers do you think i had if any publications and if so how many research papers do you think I had in my MS that enabled me to get this PhD scholarship. And just for the reference, it is a great PhD scholarship. My original scholarship offer was 20,000 Canadian dollars a year for four years. So that makes it $80,000 in total. Things have changed quite a bit since because I got a couple of other scholarships on top of that afterwards. I got a nearly $100,000 scholarship called FRQNT. I got a $24,000 scholarship from a US based organization. Not to mention another $5,000 uh, scholarship from my own university and a couple of other awards and scholarships on top of this. So take a guess off the top of your head. What do you think was the required number of publications that enabled me to get this amazing MS and PhD scholarships? And on top of that, these all other additional extra scholarships in my PhD. Comment that right now with a number because the answer may surprise you and I will tell you my answer at the end of this video but I want you to comment right now with the number you're thinking. All right so did you make your CV in Microsoft Word and then list Microsoft Office as one of your skills when you were applying for a higher education position? There you have it. That was your first mistake. Now, my second question to you is just, I'm curious, how many applications did you send with the exact same CV by changing only the name of the professor and the name of the institute in your cover letter or email? Just how many? I'm, I'm curious. Let me know how many applications did you send with the exact same CV? Because that's your mistake number two. You cannot keep doing the same thing and then expect different results. If your CV did not get accepted in first 10 applications, applications and you keep sending the same CV without changing anything in it to the next 50 positions, I assure you the chances of you getting accepted by just applying to 50 or 100 different positions do not increase. So let's fix that today. Let me give you my five tips that will instantly increase your CV potential, that will instantly let you show your research potential without any publications. And here's my tip number one. That is the look of your CV. So does your CV look something like this or does it look like that? Because this is a bad CV. That is a good CV. And here are my three reasons why the look of your CV is very, very important. Reason number one is that the average attention span of humans has really decreased over the years. Before 2000s, it used to be about 12 seconds. We famously use the phrase that, oh, we have an attention span of a goldfish. A goldfish has an attention span of nine seconds. But since the year 2000, the average attention span of humans has decreased to eight seconds. So if your CV doesn't grab the attention of the viewer in the first eight seconds, chances are it's going to the trash. And here's my second reason. Your CV is a summary of your presentation skills. As a graduate student, you will be presenting a lot of your work at scientific conferences, journals. You will be writing a lot of professional publications such as research papers. So if the summary of your presentation skills is poor, your potential for writing those research papers is also poor. So you need to show that you have the potential to show good presentation skills in all of your future works. No one is going to hire you if you show the summary, which is supposed to be the best and best and best of your work has a poor presentation skill. And here's my third reason. If your CV does not look interesting, if it does not visually catch the attention of the reader, they are simply not going to read. Because through the first glance at your CV, the reader is trying to judge if it's worth their time to read in detail your credentials, your education, your experience, or 
at a first glance if it's just not worth reading. So if they decide from the visuals of your CV that it's just not worth reading because it looks entirely unprofessional, it's just going to the trash. Now here's my second tip and that relates to the length of your CV. How long your CV should be if you have zero experience, five years of experience, 10 years of experience, or how long your CV should be if you have zero publications, five publications, 10 plus publications, because the length has to be very appropriate to your experience. If it's not appropriate to your experience, if you have zero publications, but you're sending a five page CV, it does not quite make sense. And it gives the impression to the reader that you don't really know the appropriate length of a technical document. This is the first technical document that they are viewing from you and it shows how you will be writing your future technical documents when you're writing a grant proposal, when you're writing a research paper, when you're writing a journal paper, when you're writing a presentation, a proposal, a cover letter. It shows them what you will be doing in your future work. So if you don't know what's the appropriate length for an appropriate level of experience, it gives your first impression that, okay, you don't know with an appropriate length for that type of experience. And the second reason is, of course, if it's just too long, they're just not gonna read it. No one has time to read through irrelevant 10 pages of your experience if none of that matters for the position that you're applying for. So if it's too long, they're not gonna read it. Now here's my third tip when it comes to listing your experience. A lot of students think that if I don't have any research papers, I don't have any research experience, which is entirely wrong. It's not true at all. Any internship that you do during your undergrad or master's counts as research experience and it counts towards highlighting your research experience in your CV. So if you did any kind of internship, definitely you did some market research, you read some surveys, you read some research papers, you did some literature review. You can list all of the things yet that you did in a particular internship as a research experience because it does show on your CV what were your tasks, what did you do, what was your methodology, what were the results that you accomplished. So having a research paper is not the only way to show your research potential on your CV. If you apply the right methodology, you can turn your ordinary regular internships and present them as refined research experience. Because for sure, no matter what kind of internship you did, you definitely did some sort of literature review. You definitely conducted some sort of market survey and all of that counts as research experience. You just need to highlight it in the appropriate way. Use some bullets, explicitly use some power words about what you were assigned to do. What did you accomplish in that? What were the results that you managed to achieve? Did you manage to increase the efficiency? Did you conduct a market survey on this size, that size? Be as explicit as possible without being too lengthy. Be as concise and be as clear as possible when you are listing your research experience related to these internships. And here's my tip number four, which is related to your course project. Now, not having any research paper does not mean you did not conduct any research during your courses because all of the courses in engineering related fields are research related. For a lot of the courses, you are given course projects that require you to read a lot of research papers. Sometimes you are also required to reproduce the methodology of that particular research paper, which counts as research. Some of you have done final year projects that are related to research. Some of you have read some research papers to write some course assignment or course reports in some particular course. So anything that has anything to do on going to Google, searching for some stuff, and it's not very obvious in the first stuff, and you have to do a second search for it, is a research. Search, research, search, research. So for anything for which you conducted a search more than once counts as research. Do mention it on your CV because that shows that you are good at finding the answers to the questions that you have for your course projects, for your assignments, for your homework, for your any kind of research project that you're doing. So list your course projects as research experience on your CV. Don't forget it. 
And my tip number five is related to your work in progress works. So you don't necessarily need to have a published paper to highlight your research potential on your CV. Work in progress is an excellent way to highlight your research potential on your CV. It can be anything at any stage. It can be an idea that you have, can be a paper that you are writing right now. It can be a paper that you have submitted and it's in revision. It can be a paper that you submitted and it has been accepted but not published yet. So any work in progress is your way to highlight your research potential on your CV. If you haven't even submitted the paper yet, if you're just writing it, you can still list it as research experience on your paper. You can just write the title of it. You can list your co-authors on it. You can write about a summary of your idea, what you're working on. If you're worried that your idea might be stolen, you don't have to be very clear, very explicit about it. You can just give the title and co-authors about that work and that will still highlight your research potential on your CV. Because remember, when you're applying for MS and PhD positions, there is a 96% rejection rate in engineering. There is only a 4% chance that your application will get accepted. So unless you make your CV stand out, I don't want to repeat this, but your application is going to the trash. Now here are some of the common mistakes because of which 96% applications for MS and PhD in engineering get rejected. And I have also listed some of my tips and tricks that you can use to beat that 96% rejection rate. So watch that video next. See you next time.